Before the uprising in Libya, Anita El Sulak was a student in architecture. Now, the 25-year-old is trying her luck at a new job. She is helping start a radio show on human rights. But with little experience in journalism, it's off to a rough start. You know, when we first started this, we had no idea of what we, you know, even we tried to do a radio program first without even the studio. The show's stated goal? To guide Libyans into a new democratic future. But in Libya, where civil society and a free press was previously non-existent, she says knowing what to say is another matter entirely. Because we're trying to uh, share information that we already don't know. So we need to learn it first and then try to share it. Libya was once considered one of the least free countries in the world. In 2010, Freedom House ranked Libya fourth from last and worst in the region in its annual Freedom of the World Index. Yet after 42 years of authoritarian rule, civil society has once again re-emerged in rebel-held areas. Many, like Sulak, want a voice in a new Libya. Amina Mahrebi is head of Tuasul, the youth group where Anita produces her show. For those people, they are not fighters, but they have something to contribute to this revolution and to the construction of this new state. Dozens of media outlets have emerged in rebel-held areas as civil society rushes into the newly opened space created by the fight to overthrow Gaddafi. Many are part of the war effort, spreading anti-Qaddafi messages or reports from the front line, often an attempt to turn the rest of Libya against Tripoli. Media centers can double as a rebel communications post. Yet other media outlets focus on a time after the rebellion, on identity, development, and other issues separate from politics. My name is Delara, I'm 17. I work at Bernici Post, and we started Bernici Post because we wanted to show the rest of the world the real Libya. My name is Mohamed Chimbish. I'm 22 years old. I'm the CEO of SOT, and uh, we made it because we wanted to be the voice of the people. My name is Adnan Mohamed, and uh, I'm 21 years old. And, uh, this is a group of youth, uh, as you can see. Um, uh, our name is uh, uh, Arab Pulse. Uh, we are going to talk not only going to talk about the uh, re uh, Libyan uh, revolution, we are also going to talk about the Arabian revolution, such as Yemen and Syria and uh, Tunisia and Egypt. Representatives from the rebel government say they support these new initiatives and will guarantee a free press in a new democratic Libya. Mohamed Fanouche is the director of communications of the media committee for the National Transitional Council. He says a free press is something many Libyans have yet to get used to. Under Gaddafi we had only one view to be presented in all newspapers. It is the view of Muammar Gaddafi and his revolutionary committees. He says the new Libya will avoid the mistakes of the past. We have different points of view, different views which are being expressed in, in the media. And this is what we have been after. And this is one of the major causes of the revolution of the 15th of February. Not to take his word for it, many new journalists say a vibrant media is also critical for accountability. I think it is very important, especially in this uh, phase of our uh, development, because it is like the window through which we can say what we want and make sure that others hear us. But with little experience in a free press, many are asking for guidance. They are asking for more workshops and more training and this is something new for us. Training for a new profession, for what many hope will be a new Libya.